Hi, so earlier we had seen uh, various properties of systems including uh, that of systems having memory, systems having an inverse, um, systems that are stable and also systems that are causal. So now we will see how the impulse response looks for systems having various of these properties. So let's start with systems having memory. Okay. Um, <coughs> so we defined a system with memory uh, or, or we defined that a system is memoryless if the output y of n at any particular given time depends only on the specific value of the input at that particular time. Okay, so y of n for a particular value of n depends only on x of n for that same value of n. Okay, so such systems are memoryless. So if that means, uh, so for example, for uh, so if you take the impulse response of such a system, uh, the impulse response is formed like this. There is a delta function which you give as input to the system. Let's denote the impulse response of the system as h of n. So by the definition of memoryless property, if a system is memoryless, the input here depends only on the value at 0. Hence, the output here should also depend only on the value of 0. Okay, So the, the input at n, n is equal to 0 here, or the, uh, let's say the output at n equal to 0, I, I'm sorry, so the output at n equal to 0 depends only on the input at n equal to 0. So when you give a delta function as input, there is only one in one value of the input and that is at 0 and hence by definition if the, if the system is memoryless, the output will also be a delta function. There could be a scaling factor, so so if the system is memoryless, by definition our h of n which is the impulse response will be k into del of n where k is some constant. If that is the case, if the system is memoryless then your y of n is equal to k into x of n because there is no other way uh, the, the system can be behave because if you give an x of n your output will be some factor of the input. So, if h of n is not equal to 0, for n not equal to 0, then that means the system has memory. For example, if your delta, if your input is a delta function and if your output is like this and plus there is one more component here at uh, n equal to 1, say, then it means that this system is not memoryless. Okay, so a necessary and sufficient condition for a system to have to be memoryless is that its impulse response will be an impulse, a scaled impulse possibly. Fine. And this is the uh, same thing for the continuous time systems as well. So if so your output is related to the input as y of t equal to k into x of t and your h of t equal to k into delta of t, a scaled version of the delta function is the input. And if k is equal to 1, then your y of t equal to x of t. Hence, this is a identity system. When k is equal to 1, y of t is equal to x of t. This, the following um, arguments also give us this important and useful, useful relationship. x of n is equal to x of n convolved with del of n. Similarly, x of t equal to x of t convolved with del of t. Essentially, this is an important relationship which shows that convolving a signal with an impulse will give you back the same signal. Okay, This is true as well as uh, in continuous time as well as in discrete time. So, the next property we will see about invertibility of systems. Okay, So, we saw what was an inverse system. So, there is an x of t, you give as input to some system h of t and the inverse of that system, when you convolve the 
<coughs> the inverse system which the output of the given system H HFT you should get back the original input XFT okay so this XFT will give you some will you, you convolve with HFT and you get a YFT this YFT you convolve with H1 of T and you get back the original XFT so this is this is when the system has its inverse so now let's see <coughs> what the delta f what the impulse response have to do with this so essentially this means that from the previous property which we just saw right x of n equal to x of n convolved with del of n essentially this means that h of t convolved with h1 of t this whole system here will give me a del of t because if you have this this whole system as a del of t then x of t convolved with del of t will again give me x of t okay so this is essentially what it means that when you convolve a system with the inverse of the system if the inverse exists you will get back a delta function so let's uh, quickly go through a small example which is there in the textbook this is example 2.11 from Oppenheim's book now consider our system to be a time shifting system this is system is giving is a time shift system so the in input output relationship here is y of t equal to x of t minus t naught okay this is the uh, time shift system <coughs> so what will be its impulse response let's say you want to find out what is the impulse response of the system so to do that this is the anyway the output input relationship so if you replace your x of t with del of t then you will get h of t and in this case h of t is going to be del of t minus t naught this is basically a shifted delta function h of t is del of t minus t naught and but h of t here in this case is x of t minus t naught so x of t minus t naught is equal to x of t convolved with del of t minus t naught so this is my output when I give this as input and this is the impulse response so this is input convolved with the e impulse response will give me my output right so essentially this means that if you see this expression here convolving a signal with a shifted impulse shifts the signal convolving my x of t with a shifted impulse sh shifted to time t naught gives me x of t minus t naught a shifted version of the input signal now so essentially uh, now let's see what is the inverse of the system okay the inverse of the system is going to be let's say I call it h1 of t h1 of t if your uh, if your output is delaying the impulse by t naught if your output is a delayed version of the impulse by t naught the inverse of it will advance it by t naught so in this case our h1 of t will be del of t plus t naught del of t plus t naught and hence h1 of t convolved with h h of t convolved with h1 of t will give me del of t which basically if you show it in a pictorial sense my h of t will look like this this is the so if you give a delta function as input I will get a shifted delta function as output so this is my h of t the inverse system will be del of t plus t naught which is basically an advanced delta function at t naught so now when you convolve this with this you get you get back it's basically a you're convolving a shifted delta function with another shifted delta function so the net effect in this case because this is also this is delayed by t naught this is advanced by t naught the uh, final output will be a delta function at the origin and you get h of t convolved with h1 of t as del of t okay so th this was a simple example to illustrate how the impulse response changes